Here I have a huge induction heater module from eBay, and here I have my own circuit that I've made on the breadboard. Once I power this up, I can insert a metal tool inside, and it will heat up pretty fast, and up to very high temperatures. You could use this to heat a knife for example, and cut plastic if you want. This could be a very useful tool in case that you want to rapidly heat up metals. But how does it work? Well, in this tutorial we will take a look over the main elements of this circuit, I will try to explain how the system works, and how the oscillations are created. We will see a little bit of theory behind this circuit, and we will make our own induction heating device. But before we start, make sure that you hit the subscribe button, but also the notification bell, otherwise you might miss some of my future videos. Also, as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my projects. So, let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They are now giving PCB coupons, so for that just check the guidelines in the video description. And as before you could now select any solder mask color for the same low price. So with or without those coupons, just upload the Gerber files to JLC PCB and order your boards for very low prices. What's up my friends, welcome back. To understand how this induction module works, we need to know three main things. First, how magnetic fields could induce currents. Second, how the combination between colds and capacitors will resonate. And finally, we'll look over the internal composition of metals. So let's start with the first part. Now I have connected a coil to my oscilloscope. Now I move a magnet inside of the coil, and as you can see that will induce a current inside of the wire of the coil. The stronger the magnetic field, the higher will be the current. But if I just leave the magnet in front of the coil, there is no current induced inside of the coil. That's because the induction process is made only by magnetic flux changes. A static magnetic flux won't induce current. So when I'm moving the magnet what I'm really doing is increasing and decreasing the amount of magnetic flux that's passing through the coil, and by that I'm inducing current. But our circuit has no magnets. So what else could create magnetic flux? Well, the coils. These could also create magnetic flux when current is passing through them. This is just the reverse process of induction. So basically, if I have two coils one in front of the other, if I'm passing an oscillating current to one of the coils, an oscillating magnetic flux is created, and then is passed to the second coil, and as you can see, that will induce a voltage drop in the second coil as well. In our case, we have our module with a coil, that internally is creating a powerful oscillating magnetic field. But where is the second coil in this case? Well, the second coil is the metal that we insert to be heated. And you must wonder. This does not look as a coil, but actually inside of the metal there are a lot of closed loops created and current could flow just as in a coil, these are called eddy currents. If we induce a big enough current and the metal has high resistance, this process will result into hitting the metal, because the electrons will go back and forth very fast, hitting against the resistance of the metal and that will heat up the material. So now we know more or less how induction works, and how we could use high currents to heat up metals. But how is our module creating the fast oscillating magnetic field? Well, this is a simple schematic of an induction heater like this one that I have. Here we have some capacitors and some coils, and to understand this part let me show you something first. Here I have connected a coil in parallel with a capacitor, and this is called an LC tank. I connect this to my oscilloscope and I apply a very fast pulse. Look what happens. We get a very fast oscillation, and this is the resonating frequency of our LC tank. Well, in our circuit something similar to this will happen, but with the help of some diodes. When I apply power, let's say 15 volts, I will have 15 volts to this input and to the main coil of the heater. So instead of resonating and then stop, when the LC tank that we have here will change its polarity, what this circuit does is also to activate or deactivate these two transistors, because the polarity will change on these two ends of the capacitor, and here we have connected the diodes that are connected to the gate of the transistors. So in a few words, when one transistor is on, the other one is off and vice versa, and this will create a very fast and very powerful oscillating voltage on the output coil, and the frequency depends on the values of the coils and the capacitor. As you can see we need high voltage and non-polarized capacitors, because when oscillating the voltage will have both the negative and positive values, and it could get to peaks of high voltage as well. So now we know how the circuit works, and how this will induce current into our metal. 
but different metals will hit faster or slower. Depending on the resistance of the material, the higher is the resistance, more power will be lost in the form of heat. Also, if that material is ferromagnetic as well, a magnetization and demagnetization process will happen and this will also heat up the material. Iron is one of the metals that best suits for this, because it has a good resistance and also ferromagnetic properties. So now that we know all this, and following the schematic before, I mount my own induction heating module. I've bought some of these non-polarized high voltage capacitors. I also need some transistors, some diodes, some resistors, two coils and that's it. See the schematic for this below this video, and also read the tutorial for more details and more complex schematics. I mount everything on the breadboard for tests. For the output coil I bought this one, but I've also made one. I place over a PCB pipe some wires from an old microwave transformer like this one. But you might want to use a thicker wire that could withstand high current for more time. You also have to check the inductance of the coil. It could vary a bit from the value from the schematic, but if it's too low or too high, the circuit will only draw a lot of current, but it won't work. So now I have my own induction heater on this breadboard. I supply 12 volts at the input, and now I insert the exacto knife and as you can see, it gets hot very fast, and also very hot, till it turns glowing red. Now the module that I bought had some heat dissipators over the MOSFETs. That's because this will draw a lot of current, so have in mind that you can't use this simple circuit for too long without proper cooling. Anyway, the circuit will draw a lot of current, so make sure that you have a good power supply, and don't keep this module powered on for too long. When you insert the metal, you will see how the current value will increase, since the output load will now change. So guys, that's how an induction heater works. As always, you have more details and examples on electrodubs.com. I hope that you understand the theory behind this, and how this circuit works. I also hope that this video will help you and teach you something new. If so, consider subscribing, and please make sure that you activate the notification bell, because otherwise you won't receive notification when I upload new videos. Also consider supporting my work on Patreon. So thanks again and see you later guys.